Alright, how's it going guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be inspired by a famous artist named Keith Haring, a graffiti artist. And uh, we're going to talk about what he did and uh, we'll base our project on that. So let's get going. So what we're going to do uh, is we're going to look at some examples from Keith Haring. Uh, so these examples are here. They're kind of like stick figures and basically that's what it is. But notice how there's no detail at all. So there's no faces, there's no ears, there's no hair silhouette, any jewelry, nothing at all. And it's basically just stick figures with action types of lines around it. So if I put this picture right here, you can kind of see that there's action lines are representing its movement. Now we did do Keith Haring in second grade. If you guys remember, we made a descriptive word about it. I want to do at least four or more stick figures all in one photo and they're all kind of like dancing around and that way we can kind of celebrate uh, what Keith Haring did and what he's all about. So anyways, um, let's get going. Keith Haring was a graffiti artist and his main canvas was walls, subways, and like basically brick walls and stuff in all in and all around New York City. So for us, we're just going to be using a horizontal piece of paper to imitate that. So I'm just going to make a couple stick figures here. So I'm going to make sure I place them up evenly. So we're going to create four heads, random distances and random heights. There we go, that's pretty random. And now I'm going to add bodies to them. So maybe I'll add this one kind of like standing up, has one foot up, one foot back, one hand up, and one head this way. This one will probably be going like this, one like this, one leg like this, and one hand like this, and one hand like this. Maybe I'll do this one over here, one foot like this. One foot like this, and one hand like this, one hand meeting this hand maybe, I don't know. <laughs> and finally this one kind of like probably curved in this way, foot like this, and foot like this, hand down like this, or hand across like this, and hand up like that. So here are my stick figures, so what I'm going to do now is outline them to the best of my ability to so make it look more three-dimensional. So. Um, what I'm gonna do, um, you could do this in pencil if you want, but to save time, I'm gonna do it in marker. Here I go. So, in order to inspire or to make it look more like Keith Haring, I am gonna turn one head into a dog head because that's what normally what he did. So, I'm gonna show you guys some examples right here. So, what I'm gonna do is maybe have one of them with uh, the head shape of the dog head, what he normally does. So, maybe something like that. And that'll be my only one. The rest can be just normal heads, just like that. All right. Now I'm going to outline the ligaments. So maybe this one's going like this. This one's kind of bent over like that normally. Great. So I got one down, which is good. Ta-da! Done. One done. Off to the next one. All right. And notice how sometimes they overlap, which is fine. And I'm gonna end this one there. I'm not gonna finish it. I'm gonna be doing something a little more interesting with that one. There we go. With this one, I'm gonna attach the hands together, <clears throat> make it a little more interesting, a little more obscure. There you go. This leg's going behind this one. This leg's going all the way down. And I might as well attach that arm or that foot to the other person. That'd be kind of weird. There we go. Here's the foot, body, and I'm almost done. So now I'm all done, and I have all but the stick figures left. So the best thing I would do is, if you haven't traced it, trace it now, and then go back with an eraser. I highly suggest doing a kneaded eraser instead of a pink eraser or the back of your pencil. That way you don't have so much residue. So what I mean by residue is that if you erase it with a normal pink eraser, you have a lot of crumbs here from the eraser or from the back of the eraser. So if you haven't ever seen one of these before, kneaded erasers are amazing. They're nice and flexible. You can play with them like a fidget. But um, the best thing about them is that they don't leave any residue at all. And it does a great job erasing. And you can turn it into any shape you want. So if you need like a specific area erased, just gotta pinch it and then start erasing. So I'm just gonna erase a little bit. I'm not really trying really hard because it's just gonna get colored over. I just wanna get the majority of it off. 
that way it doesn't show through the color. So say for, I was, for instance, if I was going to color this yellow, I want to make sure it doesn't show. But uh, I haven't chose what color I want to choose yet. So we'll go from there. All right. All right we're almost done here. Almost done erasing. Almost done. Okay, so we got the figures all drawn out. They look great, by the way. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take a thick marker of my choice, or you can just do like cloud pencil or a crayon, that works too. But you want a black to make the lines a little bit thicker in random spots, just to give it more dimension. So maybe I'll make it this thicker over here. Over here, maybe I'll make it more thick. Maybe by the mouth, maybe make it more thick. Cause he did make sure his lines were a little bit thicker than usual to give more dimension and also because the way he uh, the material he was using so in order to mimic his graffiti art we're gonna make a couple spots a tad bit darker than usual there we go why don't I make this bottom part a little bit dark oh that was good there we go oh that's really good all right awesome this marker is running out, but it's fine. We're doing good so far. Hmm. Let's make this arm a tad bit thicker. Over here. And we're going to meet here a little bit. Maybe I need this arm over here. All right, that's looking really good. Um, let's keep going. All right, now we got the gist of that line, those lines going, and I think I'm gonna stop right there. Maybe just one spot right there. Now we're gonna add some movement with the lines that he created. So there's two types of lines that he created when it comes to movement. He's done stuff like this, where it's just curves, and he's also done stuff where it's kind of just like three or four lines going away from each other. So we're gonna do a couple of those to symbolize movement. Over here, it's kind of a kicking motion. All right, and I did a couple, and I think this should be enough. Great, so it's looking good so far. I'm gonna add some color, so here I go. Let's add it with marker instead. I'll do red, yellow, and blue. Primary colors, keep it simple. All right, let's do uh, a yellow. Let's see if the yellow works really well with the dog. dog head version. It's looking good so far. And if you're doing yellow, make sure that any color that you used before, such as the black in my case, that it's nice and dry that way it doesn't blend in with the yellow and make the yellow look really dirty. So right now I'm doing safe so far. Everything's looking safe and good. And there. I missed a couple spots but it's okay. Let's do the blue next. Actually no, let's do the red next. Let's see how this looks. All right. All right. The solid colors. Remember, no details whatsoever when it comes to eyes, nose, mouth, clothing. Nothing at all. Just the figure and its motion. Basically, what that's what Keith Haring was trying to convey is motion and it's looking good so far I'm liking it let's make this arm all red too because it's connected and we might as well make the rest of this next guy red as well oh it's connected to the other guy too oh no <laughs> all right I'll tell you what we're gonna do with the blue so I guess we'll just make the rest of them red Again, you can choose any color you want. Just try not to do patterns or anything, or anything too vibrant. You just want to do solid colors to make it more like Keith Haring, because that's who we're trying to base our artwork off of. So we want to make sure that we're going as similar as we can. 
that way people can understand who we're trying to base it off of. So if I looked at this online and I saw it and I was like, oh, that's Keith Haring. So people would not recognize it real quick. All right, so I think with the blue, I'm just gonna do some more movement lines. And we'll go from there. So maybe some s sparks like that. You can go like that if you want. Maybe some more of these. Maybe more of this. Maybe some more sparks. And more of this. More of that. All right, I think I'm gonna call this done. So anyways, this is a more advanced version of the Keith Haring project that we normally do in second grade, but I hope you guys enjoy it. I'm sure I did, which I did, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.